Hello again, and welcome back to this series. Today I'd like to talk about how do we go from taking an object to telling Unity that we'd like to use its timeline editor to update the properties of this object over time. Well, to add a custom object to timeline, we will need to create four separate classes. First, we'll need to tell Unity what a track for this object looks like, and we'll derive that from Unity's track asset class. Once we do this, we'll be able to go into timeline and add our custom track to timeline. Next, we'll need to define what a clip for this track looks like. Each of these clips will derive from playable asset and will maintain a list of properties that we think are important for updating the properties of the object. But the clip itself doesn't update the object. That is the job of another class we'll write that will derive from playable behavior. And finally, once we start to add multiple clips to the track and combine them in certain ways with certain transitions and crossfades and that sort of thing, we will need to define a mixer class, which will derive from playable behavior and ultimately determine the final changes to the properties of the object. Now, before we get right down to the code, I would like to talk a little bit about the API uh, that Unity has specified here for the timeline and the playable system. Uh, but I do need to say, before we go on that, as far as this API is concerned, I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, I didn't know anything about this a few weeks ago until I started reading about it. And I'm sure that the Unity documentation or uh, a lot of other YouTube creators out there uh, are a little bit more of authorities on the topic. So uh, please do uh, research more if you're interested in this system. Um, but I did want to give a bit of a breakdown of how this all works before we get straight into the coding. OK, so the first class that we'll create will be called Caption Track. And this will derive from Unity's Track Asset class. And what we'd like to do is take our object and somehow tell Timeline that we'd like Caption Track to update the properties of object over time. In order to do that, we'll need to use this attribute called track binding type. So by saying track binding type, type of object, we're telling timeline that we would like to take caption track and update object over time. The second class we'll create will be called caption clip. And this will derive from playable asset. Caption clip will maintain a list of properties that we would like to change on the object. But now, caption clip and caption track know nothing about each other. So we can fix that by specifying this attribute, track clip type. Here we're telling caption track that it should accept clips of type caption clip. Now, in order to actually define the template for how these clips will change the object, we will need to define a third class called caption behavior, which will derive from playable behavior. And that template will be defined via its process frame class or process frame function. So now using this template, caption clip can, at any instance in time, create these playables. And these playables will need to be sort of mixed down and combined into one instance of time change to the object. So that is what our caption mixer will do. Our caption mixer will be derived from playable behavior. We'll take all of these playables and via its own process frame method, will make changes to the object. And now these changes to the object, this object itself will actually be bound to the playable director which is what updates Timeline. And remember, Timeline is nothing but a collection of tracks. So that is how this whole system works. Um, I know there's a lot here, and you'll probably need to go back and watch it a few different times just to really get it solidified. Um, but yeah, please do go and look at other people's videos, read the Unity documentation, and rewind this video a couple times if you need to go back through it. Uh, but this is sort of the stuff we'll be covering here. You can see in the white boxes, uh, these are the custom classes that we'll be writing. Uh, 
and then we'll go on and do the same thing for the game state track. Uh, but yeah, just sort of understand this process and then we'll get on to coding. All right, so here I am in a fresh new Unity project and I just want to start by creating a sort of temporary HUD for this project. So I'll just call it, um, I'll create a canvas and I'll call it HUD. And then within it, I'll create an image just to make a background, assign it black for now. And I'll just make it stretch across the entire screen. And I'll just call this background image. Then I'll create a text object for subtitles. And I'll call this subtitle text. I'll make the font size something around 24. And then I'll create, I'll turn it white. And then I'll come to scene view, drag it down towards the bottom of the canvas, anchor it to the bottom so that if we resize the screen, it'll resize with it. Uh, make sure that it's centered both horizontally and vertically. I don't need rich text. And then I will just sort of give it a little more space horizontally and give it space vertically for a few different lines of text. All right, so with that set up, I'll create another empty object here. And I will call this timeline. And then on this object, I will create a timeline asset, which I'll just call test. I'll delete the default animator track that it gives us. And if I click on add here, you'll see this is the tracks that can currently be added to it. So you don't see caption tracks or game state tracks or anything like that. So that's what we need to change. All right, so let's add a new folder here, which I will call scripts. And within that, I'll create another folder called custom timeline objects. And I'll start by adding a couple of C-sharp scripts. First, I'll say caption track. And then I will say uh, this messed it up. All right, let's just start with the caption track. So I'll open this up in Visual Studio. You remember when we define a custom track, uh, what we need to do is specify the binding type. And in this case, because we're making a subtitling system, the binding type will be of type text. So we'll need to include U Unity Engine UI here in order to access that text property. We'll also need to include uh, timeline and the playables system. So this isn't derived from mono behavior. It's derived from track asset because that's what defines what a track is to timeline. And then we'll just specify the track binding type here as type of text. And now just by adding that, uh, we can come back here and say add caption track. And you'll see this caption track has a binding type of type text. Uh, but I can't do anything with that yet. Like I can't add any clips to it. It doesn't know how to. So that's what we'll need to define next. Uh, and we will come back and add more to this uh, class later, but I'd like to do that at the end. Uh, so now we've defined a track. Let's now define a clip. So I'll open this up. And there'll be a little bit of bouncing around as I'm developing the system because some of these pieces depend on other pieces. So uh, again, let me just uh, derive from Unity Engine Timeline or include Unity Engine Timeline and include the playables. And this one will derive from playable asset. And now what we need to do is we need to set the property and you'll see that this turns red because it expects me to create this create playable function, which we'll do in just a minute, but we'll actually wait until we create the behavior for it first. Um, so what we'll need to do first is define the properties we would like this clip to maintain. So I'll say public string text, and this will be the text 
uh, that we want within our subtitle text. Uh, then we'll also need to know when to actually trigger changes in the subtitle text. So we we'll need to know when this clip starts and when it ends. Uh, and timeline uses double precision, so I'll use double values here. And I'll define two additional floats uh, for blending these captions. I'll call them ease in and ease out. And now I'll just save this here before I go on and create this uh, create playable function. It, it depends on this caption behavior class, so I need to define a playable behavior for that first. So let's go ahead and um, just create another C -sharp script called caption behavior. Now the reason we need to do this is because remember, clip just defines our, our caption clip just defines the properties that we want. Caption behavior defines that template for taking those properties and transferring them to actual changes in the object. Um, so now what I'll say is basically this will need to include its own this will need to include its own text object. So I'll include Unity Engine.ui here and then the Unity Engine playables. And this will derive from playable behavior. Alright. So again, this will need its own internal text object which I made here and then in within this function I'll call the override process frame function so there's a lot going on here but uh, the two main things I want you to focus on are here first of all this frame data uh, in timeline speak a frame is a certain instance in time along the timeline so this info object will hold the state of whatever is in the timeline at a given time. So for instance, uh, if we have a caption clip that is sort of fading in and fading out, that info.weight property will hold what that what the weight of that blend is, how much that um, that property is expressed along the timeline at that given time. And then player data is of type object here. This is just something given to us by timeline that's uh, holding the content that we want to use. So in this case, we want a text object, so we'll need to cast this player data as type text. If all this seems just a bit too much, you might want to go back and review that map where um, I sort of showed the whole API and just kind of read a little bit more about it. It'll make more sense. So what I want to do is say, declare a variable of type text, which I'll call player data text and then just take this player data and cast it as a text object. Then what I'd like to do is take that text, text object and set its text property equal to this uh, text member belonging to the caption behavior class. You'll see why we do that when we go back in the caption clip um, class. All right. So now that we've got that, uh, oops, player data text dot text is equal to text. There we go. All right. So now what I want to do is take this frame data, and what this will let me to do is see process frames. So this is going to be called like every frame. So what I'd like to do is take the weight of that clip and use that to set the alpha value of this text. So what I can do is I can say player data text dot color is equal to a new color and I'll make it white by default ones all in the R G and B and in the alpha value instead of giving a number I'll say info dot weight all right so the last class that we need to create is caption track mixer I'll open that up in Visual Studio And this will also need access to uh, text. So I will say using Unity Engine.ui and then using Unity Engine.playables. All right. And then this is again going to derive from playable behavior. All right. Now this function will have its own uh, process frame function. 
And the first thing we want to do here is we want to get that player data and cast it to a text object. So again, I will say player data text is equal to player data as text. And now that we have that, I'm going to create a um, variable of type string called current text. And I'll just make that empty by default. And then a float called current alpha, which will be equal to zero. Um, if we get a null reference to this player data text, there's no point in continuing, so we'll just return. Um, otherwise, we want to get all the clips that are on this track, all the playables that are on this track, and process them. So first of all, we'll need to get a count of the playables. We will say playable dot get input weight. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, dot get input count. And then we'll loop over each of these. Yeah. All right. And what we want to say is for each of these playables, get the input weight. So I will call this playable weight is equal to the playable dot get the input weight for the ith playable. Uh, assuming that this playable weight is not zero, then we can go ahead and continue processing this playable. There's no point in wasting processing power on a playable that's not going to even show up on our screen. So <clears throat> Now what I'd like to do is actually get a reference to this. So I'll say script playable caption behavior. And we'll just call it input playable is equal to, we're going to want to cast this. So I'm going to say script playable type caption behavior. Um, just calling the playables get input on i. So we're saying get the ith playable and basically get a caption behavior from that, storing that into the input playable. Remember, caption behaviors define the template for our playables. Um, so yeah, now we need to actually get the caption behavior itself. I'll call this behavior is equal to the input playable dot get behavior. This is very similar to what we saw in the uh, in the create clip or the caption clip function. Uh, <clears throat> now, now that we have this, what we need to say is current text is equal to behavior dot text. Remember that's the text property that we have specified in caption behavior. And then the current alpha is just equal to the playable weight. So whatever the weight of that playable is, which is just going to be the weight of the clip, we're going to use that to set the current alpha. And then the current text is just going to be set by the current behaviors. Uh, text property. All right, so outside of this loop, what we'd like to say then is player data text is now uh, its text property is equal to this current text and the color of this player data text needs to be equal to this. Uh, current alpha. Okay, so what we're saying is basically um, loop over. Oh, sorry, that should be color. What we're saying is basically loop over all the playables, all right, on on this track, and then basically combine them, okay, to get the uh, playable weight 
and then store that as the current alpha and then also as the current text. Okay, now that I've created a track mixer, I would like to tell the track that I wanted to use that mixer. So I can do that by saying public override create a track mixer and then use that to generate the playable for the track. See the return type here is a playable. So first of all, what I will do is I will call the get clips function. The get clips function returns an array of clips on this track. And I'll just say for each clip in get clips. So now each iteration of this loop clip will have that uh, specific clip within the array. And what I want to do first of all is say caption clip. Specify that these are basically caption clips. So take that clip dot asset and cast it as a caption clip. All right, so now we have in any given iteration of this loop, we have a caption clip. And before I go on, I just want to show why we need this. <clears throat> if I create a caption clip on this track and I move it around, let's pay attention up here, you see that the start and end values will change here but they won't change here. So I need to have a way to filter these changes down to the actual caption clip itself. And so that's what I'll say here is if this caption clip is not null, then I would like for the caption clips start value to be equal to the clip dot start. And I'd like for the caption clips in value to be equal to the clip dot end. Uh, <clears throat> but now I want it to work the opposite way, right? So whatever values I set in here by default or whenever, whenever I add these clips, I would, let's just define default values of half a second for the ease in and ease out duration, okay? So initially what I'm saying is I don't want to have to maintain in my caption clips what the start and end times are. I would like for the timeline to take care of that. So that's why I'm pulling it from here. But what I want to say here is set the ease in duration of the clip in the timeline equal to whatever I set in my caption clip. And do the same with the ease out duration. All right. So now that I have those two things uh, done, what I'll need to say is return script playable caption track mixer dot create on the basis of this graph and the input count. All right, so that takes care of returning the playable as generated by the mixer. So now, <clears throat> now you can see that this will automatically update the start and the end times. And if I just delete this clip and create a new one, you'll see by default it has that half second of ease in and half second of ease out. Now these aren't actually linear eases in and out. It's actually the sigmoid ease where it starts off zero, ramps up, and then ramps up to one. It's just sort of visually depicted this way. If you wanted to change it, you could hold down control and click At least I think that's how you do it. I don't know. But you can also change it here. You can change it to 2, see? Or I'm just going to keep it at 0.5 because that's what I like. And then that'll feed into here. So if I do change this to 2, watch this value change, see? So that's how that works. All right, so what we have now is basically a complete, uh, complete support for our caption system. And we can mix these in any way that we want. Uh, we can set the text. And uh, so as a final demonstration, what I'll do is I'll bring this down and I will just set the binding. Let me switch over to game mode. I will set the binding of this caption track to my subtitle text. And then I'll just say, set the text to this is a test make another track here 
and I'll say, isn't this cool? So now I'll just play this. You see, you've got the blend in, the blend out. And now when we create, when we create our own player for this, where this is all written out to a scriptable object and, you know, we have to, you know, deal with this ourselves with all the blending. We'll see how basically this, this blending is, is uh, written. We'll have to write a custom method for that. All right, so for now, I'll just delete these two things. And next time we'll talk about the game state track and how we can create that functionality into timeline. Thank you. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please do. Uh, that'll let me know that you're interested in this series and uh, I'll continue with making videos. Thank you.